Christ, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome in the name of the Lord to the house of the Lord. I mean, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, Pilgrim Saints of Westdale, children of light. Welcome to this house of prayer, this home of grace where love and faith hold hands. Happy Sabbath. It's wonderful to see your beautiful, shiny faces as we gather in the spirit of the Lord. We celebrate Christ together for all he's done and all he's yet to do. Each one of you are the manger in which Christ is born. Chosen, gifted, and loved by God, you are created in the holy image. Each one of you are wonderfully made and a blessing to this world. So Christ is waiting to be born again as Advent season. In the vastness of the universe and the intimacy of our hearts, Christ is waiting to be born. So arise, children of God, to join hands and hearts this day, for we gather in friendship and peace in one spirit. And today we relight the hope candle before we light the candle of peace. We light it in the midst of all the violence that darkens our world, for we are a people of hope. May our hearts be filled with anticipation of Christ's love as we prepare Christ's way, making room within us by lifting up the valleys in our lives and making smooth the rough places of others. On the Advent road, the starlight dances with joyous celebration. On the Advent road, hand in hand, we follow the star. With the shepherd's fear and the angel's joy, for we will see the newborn child. To honor our noble people in a way of life, we recognize the land that this beautiful church has been built upon. For thousands of years, the first peoples have walked upon this land. And as an act of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge the original caretakers of this land on which this church was built. I invite you to join with me in our land recognition. <coughs> Westdale United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga and the land covered by the Williams Treaty. We respectfully acknowledge and honor First Nations people's history, spirituality, and stewardship of this land, wherein our place of worship resides. <coughs> Celebrating the power and the light of the Holy Spirit at work in this wonderful church, in this place, in your hearts. Please join with me as we light Christ's lamp of grace. We light a candle in the name of the Christ child. As the stars to the maker, we are the work of God's hands. As clay to the potter, we are the work of God's hands. The Spirit of God is in us. We are children of God. Be happy. Be holy. Rejoice in God. Sing your song. 
song of love. Second candle of peace today, a second purple candle, and wonderful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we relight the first of our Advent candles, the candle of hope. The hope candle is joined by the lighting of the second Advent candle, the candle of peace. Michelle and Molly and Leo. Just gotten a little brighter in here. As 
the days grow shorter, throughout the season of Advent, we break the darkness. And that's how it, this tradition began over 500 years ago. Martin Luther, the great reformer, used a wagon wheel with torches and, uh, to break the darkness of the night. And we are the light of the world. We can break the darkness. I want you to lift up your voices and join in singing a wonderful hymn for Advent and the children. I see children today and the and I want you to come forward during the hymn and join me up here at the front. And Herald, sound the note of gladness. Be 
lead out your rhythm of hope and peace. And the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, uh, found on page 851 of the Large Bibles. Our God has said, encourage my people, give them comfort, speak kindly to Jerusalem, and announce your slavery is past, your punishment is over. I, the Lord, made you pay double for your sins. Someone is shouting, clear a path in the desert, make a straight road for the Lord our God. Fill in the valleys, flatten every hill and mountain, level the rough and rugged ground. Then the glory of the Lord will appear for all to see. The Lord has promised this. Someone told me to shout, and I asked, what should I shout? We humans are merely grass, and we last no longer than wildflowers. At the Lord's command, flowers and grass disappear, and so do we. Flowers and grass fade away. But what our God has said will never change. There is good news for the city of Zion. Shout it as loud as you can from the highest mountain. Don't be afraid to shout to the towns of Judah. <clears throat> Your God is here. Look, the powerful Lord God is coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings with him what was taken in war, and he rewards his people. The Lord cares for his nation, just as shepherds care for their flocks. He carries the lambs in his arms, while gently leading the mother sheep. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The second reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, on page 1191. The preaching of John the Baptist. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began just as God had said in the book written by Isaiah the prophet. I am sending my messenger to get the way ready for you. In the desert, someone is shouting, get the road ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him. John the Baptist showed up in the desert and told everyone, Turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. From all Judea and Jerusalem, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John also told the people, Someone more powerful is going to come, and I am not good enough even to stoop down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
house touches me deeply. Would you pray with me? God of manger and mystery, seeking your wisdom, asking your blessing. Silent word, creative act, hidden truth, revealed love. By the grace and to the glory of Christ, we wait for you. God of soulful love, your love finds us and lifts us to our feet. Hold our hearts to the beat of your amazing grace and create within us a place of hope and peace. Whisper words of wisdom. We pray in the name of Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And you asked me what uh, picture I wanted for the sermon this week, and I wasn't quite sure where I was headed with it. So I somebody emailed me this picture uh, the other day, and and so I I sent it to her. I thought I could, so I might touch on it a little bit, but they thought I could show the Nova Scotia flag, I guess. But uh, anybody know what that is? You see that on the news? December the 6th, 1917, the Halifax explosion. Hey, it was like a nuclear bomb went off in the harbor. And uh, thousands of people died. People were blind. Children that were looking out the windows at the ships to see because it, it took a while. They could see it burning. And, and, and people, the windows went in. And, 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 and within about 48 hours, they say, a trainload of, of nurses from Boston came up. Just, uh, you know, brought the people home. And, and so every year they, they send a Christmas tree from Nova Scotia to Boston. And so it made its way down there. They all send a piper and a fiddler. And, you know, they have a, uh, it's, it's quite a Boston Commons and, and they light it. And uh, this one came from a place called Stubiak. Uh, uh, I remember a few years ago, my dad and I were grooming this beautiful spruce tree on the property there in Port Mori. And, and, and we, dad said, maybe you put your name in. And you wait, and you wait, and you can wait for years and, and, uh, until they pick your tree. And then they come and they take your tree, and it's a great honor uh, to have that. So there was one there that we were grooming, and Dad would water this tree, and, and it was big. It was, uh, you know, and, and but then Fiona uh, pushed it over. And um, I don't know if they would have... It would have been a great honor. And uh, so this is the picture there. So I thought about that. We can create paths and ways and we can thank people. Um, and so as a way of thanking the people of Boston, hey, each, uh, each year since 1971, um, people of Nova have sent a tree uh, to Boston that's put up there. And uh, so it's quite an entourage and quite a celebration when it arrives there. Father used to say, you meet the people you need to meet. And uh, the other day I got a phone call from somebody. Her name was Kim. Her husband's name was Paul. And I hadn't spoken to them in over 20 years. And I don't know how they found my number. I said, how did you find me? My number's changed, I think, 10 times since I met them. And, and so they did Facebook and the church's website. And, and they called me on my cell phone. It was, I was there laying on the couch watching TV. And I got this call. And... He said, do you remember me? It's funny how a voice, a, a memory will take you back so many years. And when I was first ordained up uh, around the Cabot Trail, so this is 2001, I was there about a week. I think it was my second Sunday. And it was a Saturday night. And I got a call and it was Kim and... They were from Pennsylvania, and this was July, and they were in a little place called Meat Cove in northern Cape Breton. My first question was, how did you find Meat Cove? It's, not, it's like a speck on the map, and, uh, and the road going up to Meat Cove, if you've been there, I don't know if you've been there, have you been there? And there's a guardrail in places, but uh, and very steep and windy and a dirt road, and going up to this little town, this little village with 38 people. And uh, all related, <laughs> all related, if you go into the community center there, there's a McClellan and a McKinnon on the wall, and everybody's related to these people. And, uh, 
people up there are magnificent. And so you have this little town, this little village, and, and so I said, how did you get up there? And, and, uh, and they're on a motorcycle, on a motorcycle. And they said they got a marriage license in Port Hawkesbury on the way through, just on the chance where they might get married while they were in Cape Breton. And this was a Saturday night, so it was probably 8 o'clock or so, and they said, well, you marry us tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> so Sunday afternoon. And we had five little churches around the Cabot Trail. We had four services on a Sunday. So we had 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And I said, I can fit you in around 4 o'clock. <laughs> tells us that it's good to be a human. God is on our side. <clears throat> Incarnation. That's the word. Christianity is a religion of incarnation. And the path of God doesn't end in rarefied spirit but in flesh. Your love of neighbor can mend the world. 
Your love of life can fill your heart. The Word became flesh full of grace and truth, and it happens again and again and again. You are the manger in which the Christ is born. That's good news. That's great news. Good news in the Bible nearly always comes up unexpectedly, catching people by surprise. Let there be light. <clears throat> Let there be lots of light. Wrapped around trees and railings on lawns and in your homes that are sanctuaries of hope and peace and joy and love, like this one. Let there be light. Let there be light in your hearts. The gathered of God, worshiping God who is love and the love that created you. Let there be light. You are the light of the world. Paul says that we are saints of light. The gospel offered by Mark in our gospel today that we heard Wendy read so well begins like a breathless messenger who is eager to make an unexpected announcement. Mark doesn't begin his account by letting us linger with the baby Jesus for a, long, for a time as Matthew and Luke do or begin at rarefied heights as John's gospel does in the prologue to the gospel in the beginning was the word. Instead, Mark begins with a brief fanfare. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and then launches into telling us about another messenger, the baptizer, who also appears on the scene with good news to tell. Forgiveness. God forgives you. We can forgive others. We meet the baptizer today, Jesus' cousin. On your way to Bethlehem for Christmas, you have to go through the desert, and there we meet a man named John the Baptist. There was one thing on his list. He's keeping his message simple. His recipe for freedom is very simple. Repent, 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 because somebody is coming. If the baptizer had a church in Peterborough, I think I would sit by the door. I would be ready to escape. He keeps talking about fire and judgment. The shelves are pretty bare out there, but crowds came from everywhere. But the list is short. He just broke the bread of God with his bare hands, and he said, <coughs> eat it and live. He was the prophet of God in the style of Isaiah, God's preacher. There's no getting around him. Every single gospel writer introduces Jesus by talking about him. I've heard him described as God's security guard who tests all those who think they want in. He meets us at the door. By God speaking through John in the wilderness, we are reminded that God emerges in unlikely places. Some of Jesus' first disciples had actually been the baptizer's disciples first. He is colorful. He is aggressive. He is likable. He's abrasive. He may offend our sense of diplomacy. He may inflame within us a fire and passion for justice. He might be a problem to following a gospel of love and compassion. He may be all these things and more. But John the Baptizer appears after a period of silence 400 years in which Israel had no prophets at all. Silence. After the book of Malachi, there was silence. People want God to be silent, and God says, okay. And they want God to be silent out of fear. And that's how the book of Malachi ends, with this great bridge, this chasm between God and God's people. The people have chosen the fear of God over the love of God. That's how the Hebrew scriptures end. And then 400 years of silence, and then the word of God spoke in the wilderness, this wilderness of fear, John the baptizer says we can see the glory of God together, and the silence was broken. He was a prophet, the baptizer, who was only six months older than Jesus, his cousin, who he was sent to prepare the world for, a way other than his own. God so loved the world. 
and he attracts immediate attention as a tough-minded, straightforward, no-nonsense preacher. You stand up straight around him. I remember reading a book about a preacher by the name of Alexander White. He preached at a church called Free St. George's Church in Edinburgh, the Free Church of Scotland. This was over a hundred years ago. The author said that Alexander White could be so direct and penetrating that to hear him preach was to take your life in your hands. I don't have that charisma. People went into the wilderness to hear the baptizer preach. He preached with a sense of urgency. Advent not only marks a new beginning, but it defines the time of transition. The wilderness sermon from the wilderness pulpit climbed into John's pulpit and preached the word of God. The word of God is not war. The word of God is peace. The word of God is compassion. The word of God is not hate. The word of God is love. The world was created in miracles. Surely there are miracles yet to come. The people of God will open their hearts to the word of God. They will have the eyes to see the light of the world. What kind of preaching is needed in the wilderness today? The Messiah is coming. Look for the Messiah where you will, but you'll find him where you live. He will not be separated and kept apart from those who cry to him. He will be found right in the midst of the daily routine, ordinary stuff of life. No matter how rough the road is. So wherever you're looking for him in the ordinary spaces of that living, look for the holy, that the holy might be found in you. Today we are in the baptizer's church. It's his story, but it's not his gospel. But it's his turn to preach. And he's going to make the path for the one we have all been waiting for. His purpose is to level the ground, to offer forgiveness, to baptize people into a new way of life, offering a recipe for freedom. Nativity set that I showed the kids today came from a woman that I had just met, Nora, a quilter and embroiderer. She came into the office. She said, can I speak with you? I have this, this beautiful nativity set that I want to give you. And it had belonged to Leslie, her daughter, who had given it to her 25 years before. She said, my daughter would be 50. Her daughter was killed 25 years ago by a drunk driver. She was 25 years old. And she said that Leslie had given her this nativity set that last Christmas. said it still feels like it just happened. She said sometimes the valleys lift and the roads are not as rough. Sometimes we just get more guardrails. But we have a path forward and enough faith to see the glory of God. God said, let there be light. And that's the kind of darkness we are called to break. That's wilderness preaching. <laughs> the Kentucky poet and farmer Wendell Berry says that love is the very heart of God. Perfect love casts out fear. The Christmas spirit we carry is that hope which is invincible, clings to the hearts of the faithful, and announces in the face of any darkness the world can produce, and all the indoors that can be slammed in our faces, and all the dark nights of our souls, that with God all things are still possible, that even now unto us a child is born. So to God who is amazing grace, always loving, always offering us a path forward, 
always reaching out a hand to lift us to our feet. Be honor and glory, praise and thanksgiving, this day and forever. Amen and amen. I want you to lift up your voices and join in singing on Jordan's Bank.
peace beyond conflict, dawn after dark night, heal all that is broken in our hearts, in our streets, in our world. We pray for all those whom we love and who we carry with us today as we lift them up to you in silence or spoken aloud for all to hear. find strength in their souls, may they know peace and healing in their prayers. Blessed Creator, shine upon them with healing and with grace, and draw together all our prayers, silent and spoken, as we show our trust in your love by joining all your church in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Westdale, the gift of your life is a source of blessing in this world. So let us glorify God through our gifts. We now present our gifts and ourselves unto God. We now present with joy our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Christ Church right here in beautiful Peterborough and through the Mission and Service Fund across the country and around the world.
for everyone family friendly and we'll light candles. The children will be given glow sticks and, and so we'll, we'll uh, so come on out to that. And a quiet Christmas. Um, service that's Wednesday, yeah, the 20th at 7 p.m. And that'll be followed up. We'll have some refreshments after as well in the friendship room and, and the time to gather. And so the last couple of years we've had about 25 people come out. You'll be with us if this service will uh, be helpful for you on your journey. Uh, the choir Cantata, looking forward to this next Sunday. Glorious and, and glory shone all around. And uh, looking forward to that. It's going to be wonderful. The book club, Kim has a wonderful book club uh, here Friday, December the 15th, so this coming Friday at 1 30 in the Westdale Library. Pick a ball drop in, wonderful there. Renee's offering that to force. If you'd like to learn how to play pickleball, a wonderful sport, Henderson Hall. So that's Friday as well. Chris, uh, oh, yep. Yeah. I need two more people at least. Okay. That's it, yeah, that, okay. You'd have to hit it against the wall. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. That's, uh, okay. and, uh, it's not a solo sport, it's sport. <laughs> it's really going to, yep. So, that's, so we need two more people. So if you're feeling you want to learn pickleball, and uh, that'd be wonderful. The office is closed, uh, so Tuesday, um, and we'll reopen. Okay, there we go. Please know the office will be closed on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll reopen on Thursday. So it's open tomorrow and Thursday. A UCW meeting is coming up Tuesday, December the 12th, 1.30, at the home of Nancy. So, and Nancy has a wonderful healing fund a ministry, the little box there uh, that Floyd had made, if you'd like to support the healing fund. Um, batter up. This looks, this is exciting, Canada today. Uh, so the events committee has uh, made arrangements. So if you'd like to go see a Blue Jays game, the Houston Astros, and so that's uh, July 1st, so we have to kind of get on that soon. I guess there's so many seats set aside in the bus there, and then, um, there you go. So the game's at 307, and uh, yeah, so it's $229. That's dinner and bus ride and a ticket, so, uh, so that seems quite, quite reasonable. And uh, so that's, uh, looking forward to that. Happy birthday. Who has a birthday in December? Anybody got a birthday? Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anybody else have a birthday in December? Oh, you scratched your face. I thought maybe it was your birthday. No. I'm uh, No. <laughs> All right, well, let's sing happy birthday.
carry down the basket down to the coffee there. I want you to take home a piece of cloth and write a prayer on it. It might be a person, it might be a situation, or, or uh, whatever you would like. And then we're going to weave those into the prayer over the next couple of weeks. People of God, beloved of Christ, bearers of holy light, may the bright God of peace bless you wherever God may send you. As you go out to take God to others, know that you will meet God in others. God's promise is alive in you. So receive blessing upon blessing, discovering the power to bless and heal and inspire one another. May your life make large the Spirit of God. Go in peace as a spirited people, courageous in thought and generous in love. Go boldly into the world, be of good courage and gentle of heart, and be the eyes that see the holy in all people and the heart that is full of life. And may you honor the image of God in all people and show Christ's love to the world. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen.